So I will be using the term SDA, which stands for SD association through my talk, uh, interchangeably, so don't get confused, it's all the same thing. So I'm going to talk today about the NVMe adoption by SD and microSD memory cards. Uh, my name is Michael Lavrentiev. I am technologist with Western Digital, uh, but I'm going to give this presentation on behalf of SDA. Uh, I joined SDA 10 years ago, and now I'm the specification workgroup chair in the SDA. I'm going to talk about SD Express cards that SDA started to define in November 2016. Uh, first, I have to make a legal disclaimer to make our legal department happy. Uh, this presentation may include some forward-looking statements and we are taking no obligation that those forward-looking statements are going to realize. SD Association creates uh, specifications for SD cards for more than 20 years, focusing on maintaining the relevance and value to consumer and industrial users. As of today, we have around 800 members covering all the aspects of removable card ecosystem uh, like cards, connectors, memory devices, and host vendors. As the association provides technical marketing and compliance capabilities to its members, allowing its all work together to meet the industry needs. So, SDA started in January 2000. At that time, there were quite a few different form factors and uh, card types in the market, still driven by the group of market leaders who joined the organization and dedicated their effort, uh, SD specification got adopted fast and became de facto the standard used by all of the consumer market. In 2005, we introduced the microSD form factor. Uh, together with full-size SD, those two form factors contributed a lot to the digital consumer market growth happened in the turn of the century. After that, uh, there were a lot of new stuff introduced, like ultra high speed versions, and the latest biggest jump of introducing the SD Express. SD standard continues to evolve, driven by SDA members, following the market needs and technology evolution, <laughs> including the most recent SD 9.0 release. The best proof of success of this standard is the fact that billions of cards were sold all over the years, and there are a million of host devices in the market who utilizes microSD and SD cards. I want to talk a little bit about technology and marketing evolution trends that we see that affect the SD card usages. So we see uh, multi-core processors all around us today. Uh, they're used in mobile products and gaming and pretty much in any consumer product today. Such processors operate at multitasking and require multi skew support. If we are talking about video resolution and graphic needs, they are continuously growing. We see 4K, 8K resolution gaming uh, utilized in gaming all over the place, and 12K raw requirements rising up in imaging. Uh, if we look at uh, speeds of interchip interfaces as well as external IOs, we see they are growing fast. We see PCIe as de facto standard used all over today, and they continuously increase in their rates. So uh, today uh, they're discussing PCIe 6 in the, their specification for PCIe SIG. So who knows where it will go? We see NVMe is gaining a wide popularity and slow becoming the de facto standard for non-volatile memory access on top of PCIe as its physical and link layer. We see that flash technology continues to evolve. We have 3D NAND, VNAND, some buzzwords like 4D NAND today, and who knows what's going next. This never-ending evolution capacity and performance continues to open more and more opportunities for everyone. Uh, 5G. 5G network allows huge amount of data to be generated 
and transfer to and from the cloud, but also it pushes the need for the storage at the edge in the end user equipment, either in its embedded or removable memory devices. In that environment, we believe that high performance cards may enable new use cases like system memory expansion, application running from the card, just to name a few. Let's see what uh, the potentially growing markets for SD cards as we hope it will evolve. We see virtual reality systems, drones, extreme cards with 360 degrees views, 4K, 8K video resolutions, all requiring high performing cards. IoT is a wide area with a lot of different applications and opportunities. They require low power security, and some applications do require high performance. Uh, gaming requires high performance as it needs extremely fast read and high resolution graphics to run from the card capabilities. Mobile computing. Looking for the system memory expansion, sometimes semi embedded, with very high performance and card capacities. Uh, dash cameras for cards and surveillance security cameras. They require high endurance and extreme temperature ranges. Many systems record multiple cameras in parallel, which requires high performance on simultaneous writes. We see cameras with extra high resolution, 12K, 8K in uh, professional cameras that may go down the stream to DSLRs and MILS with the next generation of imaging sensors. Uh, the new features we introduced with SD9 spec, like TCG, RPMB, and Boot, open even more opportunities for SD cards, especially in combination with the high-speed extreme capability, uh, high-speed SD Express capabilities. Bottom line, we see that the new card with high performance based on modern PCA and VME protocol may provide a lot of benefits to SD and the market. So the SD Express is the answer from SDA for this need. The PCA high-speed interface and the advanced NVMe protocol were added to SD cards, opening new horizons for SD card usages. SD Express card includes the standard PCA NVMe interface besides the legacy SD interface, allowing support for the new opportunities while still using the well-known form factors and being compatible with existing host in the market through its SD UHS-1 interface. This is what we call the best of all worlds. <clears throat> so what are the main features of SD Express card on top of supporting NVMe PCA protocol? We support the legacy SD interface up to UHS-1 with the transfer speeds up to 105 megabyte per second, ability to start from either legacy SD or PCA interface. We continue to support the 4KV ESD protection or on its pad as legacy SD cards, support of hard plugin and removable. Uh, one point that was mentioning, uh, which is different on electrical side from legacy PCA is that we pushed the coupling capacitors of TX lines from device to the host. Well, this is just a snapshot showing that we can switch between SD and PCA modes. So if you want to start from SD, you can check for PCA support and switch to PCA or just go and initialize directly over PCA. From PCA in VME perspective, SD Express card will identify itself as standard non-volatile memory subsystem with NVMe Express interface. Nothing new here. <laughs> uh, there are quite a few specs released uh, by SDA on SD Express. SD7 and SD8 specifications that introduced the SD card, uh, SD Express cards, based on PCA 3.0 and 4.0 respectively. The latest spec that we released for SD9 introduced security features like TCG, RPMB, and fast boot, and secure boot as well. Uh, that's how SD and micro SD cards are looking on their pinout for the SD Express versions.
The first row is conventional SD pinout supporting SD signals in SD mode and PCIe sideband signals in PCIe mode. The second row was added to support differential IOs of PCIe mode as defined in SD7.0 and SD7.1 specifications. The third row was introduced by SD8 spec to support the two lane configurations. So, third row is supporting the second lane of differential PCIO interface. Adoption of NVMe PCIe in SD Express allowed to take advantages of all the various advanced capabilities of those protocols. In addition, the sequential bitrate capability got quite a big boost. If we compare the speeds of SD Express with the widely used UHS 1 interface of SD cards, with SD7.x, the bitrate increased 10 times. And if we talk about the newly introduced SD8.0 spec uh, that can support uh, PCIe 4.0 with two lanes, the speeds are jumping up 40 times over SD UHS 1 and more than 10 times faster than SD UHS 2 protocols. Of course, if we are talking about more performance, it, we need to provide more power. Uh, while SD7.x were defined to stay within the legacy SD power envelope, when we are going to PCA Gen 3 by 2 or Gen 4 configurations, uh, it required additional high power mode. Know that we are talking about maximum consumptions. To reduce the power when non-active, PCA low power substates can be used. Both PCA and NVMe have a lot of test vendors uh, in the market. In order to allow usage of existing test equipment, the SD Express test fixtures were built for cards and hosts. SD7.x test fixtures are available for any interested party today, and SD8 test fixtures are in final stages of development. So if you want to have a look on those, you're welcome for SDA boost that we have. Uh, you will see the real-time running and the real test fixtures and what you can measure with them. Such cards may be borrowed from SDA designated labs, which are GRL and Alien, or can be purchased directly from Wilder Technologies that develop those test fixtures for SDA. Uh, quickly a few words about the latest SD9 specification. I'll start from some background. With the high performance of SD Express cards, we see an interest to use them as semi-embedded memories with boot capabilities for all the different applications we discussed before. Some push is coming from the right to repair legislation in Europe and other regions. <coughs> we believe that use of SD as semi-embedded may reduce the basic bomb cost for systems, improve their upgradability, serviceability, and configurability. So what we introduced. To support the demand we just discussed, uh, SD9 spec provides several security features, such as support of boot with fast boot and secure boot features, support of trusted computer group secured storage methods, including self-encrypted drive capabilities, and replay protected memory block support. We believe this will open new opportunities for SD cards to bound with specific host products, such as semi-embedded devices replacing the soldered embedded memories for IoT, Chromebooks, etc. Or it can be used as secured memory for OEM applications like gaming, automotive, <laughs> and so on. Now let's get a little bit more technical. I want to give an example on how SD Express host can be implemented. This particular example is based on utilizing existing resources of SD host. <coughs> which can be SD3 and above and PCIe host that all we need from it to support the hot plugin to have the present detect input. 
A new components that will need to be added for this configuration are the 4-bit signal switch and also we need two new control lines to be added to the SD driver which will be the VDD2 on and PCA in VME enable. <coughs> so it will start from SD initialization, check where the PCA is supported and switch to PCA. The advantages of this solution is we believe that there is no need to change PCA and VME drivers and the SD drivers just need some very small modification. Let's go through it step by step. So once uh, SD or micro SD card is inserted, it will get detected and host will send interrupt to the SD driver to support the insertion. Sorry. SD host driver will power the device on and initialize SD card in SD mode and check the capabilities to support PC in VME. If it detects that it is supported, the SD driver will turn on VDD2 and set a PCA NVMe interface enable line. The first one will tell SD card, SD Express card, as well as the 4-bit signal switch to go to PCIe mode. The second one will indicate to PCIe host that PCA NVMe device is inserted. From this point, PCA driver will perform PCA link up and continue to communicate with the card as standard NVMe device. If it looks too complicated and some host vendors would like to have a simple adoption of SD Express support, it may use one of the available off the shelf solutions. There are a few vendors like Bayhub, JMicron, and more that provide a full bridge solution from the <clears throat> either PCA or USB to the SD Express card interface. And once again, if you go to SDA booth, uh, you can see those solutions present and like look, feel, and touch. <laughs> Some host vendors might want to use SD Express card inside the equipment as semi embedded devices, in which case only SD Express card are expected to be used and there is no risk of a legacy SD card insertion. For such a case, the host may simply connect the PCA interface to the PCA interface pins of the SD Express card socket. Note the host is also required to put the AC coupling capacitors on the TX line of the card close to the connector pads. That's what we mentioned when we said that there is some slight electrical difference on PCA side. Uh, we believe there is no need to change any PCA NVMe driver and the card will behave as standard NVMe memory device. In my last slide, I would like to provide a few hints from our ongoing activities. Usually we do not publish detailed information and certainly do not expect publication dates about our ongoing work. Anyone who is interested can join uh, these activities and they can be at least get better familiarity with SDA plans if you join SDA as a member. So what we believe we are going to see in some observable future, SDA always defines some speed classes allowing efficient interoperability and setting expectations between consumer equipment developers, cons customers and card vendors. The same thing is expected to be done for the SD Express card for its PCA NVMe interface. Another native evolution for SD standard will be to enhance the microSD Express form factor with the support of PCIe 4.0. Also, SD Association plans to open the organization for new form factors with or without SD interface. With that, I am done with my presentation of SD Express cards, the latest generation of most popular SD cards with the newly added PCIe NVMe interface. We all hope that SD Express Card will open new opportunities for NVMe as well for, as for SD Cards.